Unlucky. Welcome to DMCA. Okay. Focusing on my game. You are Kevin Whippaloo, a survivor trying to survive in a world filled with infected zombies everywhere. You have a pistol and a backpack. You have managed to survive several months avoiding zombies and scavenging food. You cautiously enter a rundown store and hear a noise. What do I do? Invest, investigate the noise with caution. You are in luck. It is a can of peaches. You pick it up and Colin, welcome to the new world. You are falling, falling, and falling. What? What? I'm just gonna enter. You know you will land, but on what? A soft, comfy bed of cotton? A hard rock surface? A slime pit full of hungry worms? You don't know, but the future is uncertain. I fall into a pit of toxic slime that gives me superpowers. Let's see what happens here. Exclamation mark hash dollar percent and hash carrot at what? Toxic slime drips off your body as you painfully absorb it into your blood and guts. Made smarter and faster by the toxic slime that is part of your body, you will rule the world after you take a nice long nap. You have become a master of the toxic arts. Holy shit! Poisonivius, or Poisonivus. I am the one. I take a nap and recover my strength. You take a nap and recover your strength. While you sleep, people die all around the world. You awaken feeling refreshed <laughs> and ready to take on the world, which is good because it needs saving again. <laughs> I walk out into the public street. You look around. Everything is quiet. Too quiet. Is this some sort of new trap? You spot a manhole on the other side of the street. Enter the manhole. You open the manhole and descend down it. You find yourself in a sewer tunnel. You walk down the tunnel a ways and find a large room with a counter and cabinet. A rat crosses your path. Destroy the rat with my slime powers. The rat is destroyed. You destroy the counter and cabinets, finding food and supplies. Now you have everything you need to start a new civilization. Uh... Okay. Um... Start building a lemon... Lemonade stand with a sign that says... Uh... Safe it says four zombies. Or no, not four zombies. You start to build a lemonade stand. As you work, zombies come out of the woodwork and attack. You quickly build a large wall around your project. You are trapped in a walled city. 
Uh, use my powers to melt all of the zombies. How did I get so powerful so quickly? I'm like a speedrunner in this game now. Like, I just immediately got powers. I'm so smart and funny. You pull out your Rosie and spray down the zombies. You turn around and spot a little girl in the rubble. She looks like she's had a rough life. You take her in as your own daughter. What? My Uzi? Why am I not using my powers? I just fucking spray everyone that quickly? Uh... What do I do with my daughter? What do I name her? Stop. Oh, God. Chad, I'm not... Okay. Give her lemonade. No. Sign her up for the Girl Scouts. You sign your daughter up for the Girl Scouts. Days later, she returns with several boxes of cookies, which you immediately start to eat. You don't feel so great. <laughs> Hmm. It's good that she's in Girl Scouts, though. Mm. Let's see. What are in these cookies? Masker. The Girl Scouts and your daughter inform you that the cookies contain gluten, casein, and several other delicious but deadly substances. You have become a walking stomach. What? Why have you done this to me? The little girl climbs up your esophagus and out your mouth. She stares angrily at you and demands money. You die of starvation. What? What? <laughs> Hello? Um, okay, hold on. Let's see this. Uh, descend into hell. You enter hell, filled with fat naked men and demons. You are sent to the fat guy's oven, where you are cooked to perfection in a four-hour process. Beg Satan for my life or for for forgiveness. Satan agrees to forgive you, even though you practically ruined his entire underworld empire. He sends you back to Earth. You wake up and find yourself in a hospital bed. Nice. Just big, man. I like guess whatever. Okay. Uh, so I'm in a hospital bed. I assume I lost my powers. Uh, I'm just going to look around. Look around and... Or no. Scan my surroundings. You notice the leader of the underworld. Satan, entering the room with several guards. Ah, you're awake. We need to talk. What's up? Hey, Satan. What's up, man?
We need to talk. I'm busy. I'll give you one chance to join me. No thanks. Just kidding. I do want to join you. I want to join Satan's army. Why is it talking Great. for me? You join forces with Satan to become king of the world. Just kidding. What? Wait, what is the truth? I'm confused. Okay, I'm just gonna enter and see what happens. You say no way. Good luck with that. Get him. You struggle, but you are ultimately captured. Your body is destroyed and your soul is sent to hell. You suck at choices. <laughs> okay. J Treaty, Aberfavis, Transparent Compact Disc, Lord Fox, Mednades, Super Axel. Thanks for the subs. Okay, I'm back in hell again. Um. Talk. Hang out with other people in hell. You spend the rest of your afterlife in hell with Satan. The two of you become great friends and you write a book about all the women you both know. It becomes a New York Times bestseller. What? Okay. Um. Who's someone in hell I could hang out with? Find Hitler. I just want to see if he's here. You spot an opening to another room. Inside is a large muscular man with a large mustache. Hello, you say. The man turns around and you immediately know it's Hitler. You <laughs> found him. <laughs> oh my god. Um, I don't like you. Oh, good. You continue conversing with Hitler until he gets bored. He goes into another room to play with his trains. You have found his hiding spot. <laughs> Smash his trains. Go find Hitler and Helen the Lord. Stuff, smash his trains and stuff him into a locker. Let's see what happens. You see Hitler playing with his trains, blissfully unaware of what you're about to do. You sneak up on him and smash every single one of his trains. He's furious. Who did this? I did. No. I did. What are you gonna do about it? Hitler begins to chase you around his house. You quickly run into his kitchen and grab a knife. Come at me, bro. You yell. You begin to viciously stab Hitler. As I stab him, I call him a giant fat pussy loser with no friends. This fighting turns Hitler into a vengeful spirit. He chases you around his house, no! screaming at the top of his lungs. He's a spirit now. Um, fight Hitler again with a crucifix. How do you spell crucifix? I'm retarded. I'm in hell. With your superior fighting techniques and the help of a powerful religious symbol, you destroy Hitler once and for all. Ah, uh, no. <laughs> yes! Fuck, I'm talented. Hmm. So Hitler is destroyed. Uh, loot him. Yeah. You find several things on Hitler's body. 
a golden watch that plays a tiny song every hour, a golden ring with the word militant. Absorb his essence. Yeah, someone typed this. I want to do, see what happens. You destroy Hitler's essence, body, and soul. He can never come back to haunt you or anyone else ever again. You have won. I destroyed Hitler. Okay. Um, so I'm in hell. I've destroyed Hitler once and for all. Who do I want to go find next that's in hell? Uh... Stalin. Begin my search for Stalin. You begin your search for Stalin. You ask where he is and somebody told you to go to an old house that nobody lives in. You find the house and make your way inside. This is going to be spooky. This is no joke. All right, let's let's take this slow. Layer the outside of the house with booby traps. You set up deadly booby traps all around the outsides of the house. Nobody in their right mind would ever dare to enter this death house. You then wait for Stalin. We hit enter again. You wait for hours, then you see a figure slowly approaching the house. It's him. You wait until he steps into one of your traps and then, snap. Your preparation has paid off. Approach Stalin, who is trapped. Stalin is now caught in your snare. He struggles against the tight wire, but it's no use. He's caught. Help me, comrade. I've fallen into a trap. I am not your comrade. I am here to destroy you. Destroy me? Why the hell would you do that? Because you're a monster, you say. You scold him for his vile deeds. You are fat, ugly, poor, and stupid. And no one likes you. You say this and more. You tell him that his mother was a smelly, ugly monkey and his father smelled of goats. You insult him for every bad thing you can think of. Okay, good. What happens next? You've angered Stalin pretty badly. He struggles to get free. You want to see a monster, little one? I'll show you what <gasps> a monster really looks like. Stalin begins to change. Oh, shit! Oh, God. Okay. Okay. Um. What do I do? Stalin's fucking ascended. <laughs> this is a fucking boss battle. Run away to my other booby traps around the house. You see that you have no other choice but to run away. You quickly make your way past the house and into one of your many booby trap setups. Um, attempt to transform into something more powerful. Maybe I can do what he does. You try to transform into something more powerful than a human but less powerful than a deity. You have turned yourself into a powerful ogre. You see Stalin attempting to make his way out of the house. 
I'm a fucking ogre now. Uh. Let's see here. Smash him. You smash Stalin into bloody bits. You've won. You decide to use your powers to create a new life for yourself. But that's another story. Okay. Uh, spit on Stalin's corpse. Beginner tips if you're new to Blood Chronicles. Here are some tips for you. What? Always have escape routes planned out in advance. If something starts going wrong, your first instinct should be to run away. What? Loot Stalin. I don't know what the fuck that was. You loot Stalin for any valuables he might have had on him at the time of his death. Nothing but 50 gold coins. You use these coins to purchase the most powerful value you can find. Nice. Begin training my bow skills. Your bow training goes well. You train your archery skills to master level. You are now ready to defeat Marek if he should return. Who is Mer? Uh, challenge Satan to a battle. You begin to challenge Satan to a battle. Well, what do we have here? I challenge you to a battle. And whoever wins is the ruler of hell. I accept your challenge, but just out of curiosity, what makes you think you'd be a worthy opponent? I could wipe the floor with you with only a minor effort. I am now the master of the bow, and I have defeated Stalin and Hitler and absorbed their essence to help me on, help me in this battle. The master of the bow, huh? That's pretty impressive. I assume then that you have the Bow of Destiny? Yes. With this bow, you will easily be defeated. Never heard of it. It must not be that powerful what? then. But let's not waste any more time and meet down in the arena. You laugh at his ignorance and take your leave. He doesn't know that I've got the bow of death. He doesn't even know what it is. He's about to get fucking owned. Take your leave. I prepare an arrow in my bow of destiny and pull back the string in full force. You enter the battle with Satan fully prepared. You release your arrow and it lands directly in his throat. Blood spurts out of the wound as you pull back to see if you've defeated him. Nice. He clutches at his throat and the gurgling sound of blood is the only thing coming out. You laugh as you watch him die. Ha ha. I've won. You shouldn't have underestimated the bow of destiny, which I have. Now I will drink your blood and feast on your heart. You rush over to Satan to finish him off. 
you can taste his blood in your mouth and feel his still warm heart in your hands. Mmm. Eat his heart. You eat his heart. It tastes delicious. You suddenly feel powerful, like you have never felt before. You have defeated the ruler of hell and claimed it for yourself. Hell is now yours. Challenge God. <laughs> Should I challenge God? <laughs> challenge God. Himself. Isn't this supposed you to be a zombie? You now decide to go where no man has gone before. You challenge God himself. You march up to the gates of heaven with your bow in hand. Oh man, the bow of destiny. Okay. I have defeated Hitler. I have defeated Stalin. And I have defeated Satan himself. I now challenge thee, creator of all, for the rights to being the ruler of everything and everyone. No, every of everyone and everything. You hear a booming voice from the heavens. I see you have my bow of destiny. This makes this battle more interesting. You are struck by lightning and fall to the ground. Fuck. <laughs> Damn it. He already owned me. I can't fight God without having a cup of wine. I feel the blood of Satan course through my veins. And it gives me a boost of power and I rise to my feet. I pull back my or the string to my bow of destiny and aim it at the heavens. I feel the blood of Satan coursing through my veins and it has given me strength. I feel like I could take on all of creation. You release the arrow and see it reach its destination. and fall right out of the sky. Ha. Huh. Try to defeat me with my own weapons, will we? You won't succeed. You are struck by lightning again as you fall to the ground. I won't give up. I, I won't surrender. Let's just, I'm just gonna say this, I'm gonna let the AI take over. You stand up and pull back the string of your bow. I won't give up. I won't surrender. You release the arrow and see it reach its destination and fall right out of the sky. Damn it, okay. Um. Pick up Satan's weapon and use it instead. But I don't know what Satan's weapon is. I'll let it fill up for filling. You pick up the sword that Satan dropped when you killed him. You enter heaven and see God's palace right in front of you. If this is my destiny, then so be it. By the way, this is a zombie campaign in case you're just now kind of learning the story. Uh, I'm just, I defeated Satan. Now I'm about to kill God. Um, 
but it's a zombie apocalypse. It's fucking crazy. Uh, a lot of zombies. <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, this, huh? Take God's mother hostage. Could try that. Uh, let's see. Do walk through the gates with confidence. You walk through the gates and knock on the door. A bright light begins to shine and you are instantly incinerated. What the fuck? You have been judged and found unworthy to even enter heaven. You are now tormented for all eternity in Satan's infernal realm. I own hell. What is that what does it even mean? I literally own hell. Um Okay, but then I remember that I am the ruler of hell and simply am just sent home. The end. Bitch! <sighs> How can I defeat God? so powerful you walk through the doors that are instantly incinerated what the hell is that all right fuck you i gotta be less crazy i gotta like make rules for myself i can't just have a health potion i can't just ooh respawn in hell i feel like that would make it more fun What do I want to try and do this time? Apocalyptic, mystery, archive, Halloween. We need to remind the AI uh, the story when it pops up. Yeah, maybe that's a good idea. How do I do custom? Oh, it literally says custom. Enter a prompt that describes who you are in the first couple sentences of where you start out, etc. You are a knight of the kingdom of Larian. You are hunting the evil dragon who has been terrorizing the kingdom. Uh, okay. I am a Twitch streamer named Soda Poppin. I am trying to become the most famous person ever without being a cringy loser at the same time. I turn my stream on and everyone starts making fun of my hair. Then they start talking about how I look like a girl or something. Huh. I don't look like a girl. I And that's a really mean thing to say. I don't look like a girl, and that's a really mean thing to say. You are now ignored by your viewers as they continue to make comments <laughs> about your appearance. <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> I start crying. <laughs> you start crying as hundreds of people watch online. Yourself, why is this happening? My life is over. You continue to cry <gasps> as your chat asks you to kill yourself. What the fuck? Holy shit. 
I ban everyone. Okay, no more comments. You ban everyone as you continue to cry and apologize for being such a loser. Someone tells you that if you jump off a bridge, it would be like six million views. Oh my god. <laughs> what the fuck? Holy shit. This is so dark. <laughs> um. Let's see. But I don't want to kill myself. Shutting off chat. Goodbye, cruel world. What? Later you wake up in a hospital under psychiatric care as they tell you what happened. I did it anyways? Oh my god, I'm an idiot. Okay. Um... Am I famous? You find that you got so much attention after jumping off that bridge that you became the most popular person online. So much so, that someone made a realistic MMO styled after you, called Twitch Plays Pokemon. <laughs> yes! Alright, let me see. Uh... If you jump off the bridge, it will be like a six million views. It's true! Uh, in order to improve it. Okay, so... Please write a summary of what's happened so far. I want to be famous. Um, and my viewers made fun of my appearance. I got sad. They told me to kill myself. So I jumped off a bridge and woke up in a hospital as the most famous person online. All right. Jesus Christ. Twitch plays Pokemon. Uh, okay, I'm just going to enter and see what they say next. In it, everyone can command a virtual you. What will you do with your fame? What will I do? Uh, I let everyone control all of my actions. Year 20. It's been a year oh, since no. you let the world control you. Everyone has gotten used to it. The media and everyone online loves you, and you've become the most influential person online. Yes! Uh... I'm gonna enter again and just see what happens. The world has become a much more happier place. Sure, there are still some people who dislike you, but that is the price of popularity. <sighs> Collab rate with Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Year 35, it's been a long time since you first allowed the world to control you. You've become more and more relaxed with your fame. You've done every imaginable thing that you could do online, and you have become bored of the internet. You're now looking for something else to do, but you know that you won't find it. What? Uh... Look for a wife on Tinder. Year 50. It's been a long time since you've first allowed the world to control you. Now that you have someone special in your life, the world seems like a whole new place.
People are a little less hostile towards you, and you're a lot more happy. While Pokemons have evolved, you're still the same old Greg. I think your donation is stupid, guess who? Now shut the fuck up. How am I Greg? Isn't my name Kevin, or is that the... Oh no, I'm Soda Poppin'. How am I Greg? I'm old Greg. And how are Pokemons? Hmm. Hey, Chance just wanted to say thank you. Your stream means a fucking lot to me. When I feel miserable about my life just watching you playing some dumb game and saying even dumb or SHT makes me laugh and forget how bad things are. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Dab. Uh, try to have a kid with my wife and train. I'm just going to go with this. I want to train my kid to be a streamer. Year 75. You've had <laughs> a long time with your new wife. But you haven't participated in anything that you've wanted to do. All you've been doing is breeding and helping out innocent Pokemon. <laughs> I feel... I feel like the game doesn't know what a Pokemon is or is confused in some shape or form. All you've been doing is breeding and what the fuck? Am I like an animal? Um. What is a Pokemon? I'm just going to ask it. See what it says. Ye 100, you finally left your house to the dismay of your fans. You're not a kid anymore, and people have started to forget about you. I'm not a kid anymore after turning 100? What kind of fucking lifespan do I have? Like, dude, I'm like, I should be dead by now, pretty much. Huh. I'm not an ogre. That was a, this is a different story. I'm virtual. Oh, okay. Maybe I'm actually just like a virtual, like I'm a VTuber, but pure, like I'm actually an AI. Uh, I don't know where to go with this anymore. I'll be honest. I actually don't know where to go. I'm on a fucking new one. Give me a different one. <laughs> Let's try cyberpunk. Ooh. I could be a cop. Okay, cyberpunk pop, cop. Um, Gary Owens. The leader of the government is going to make a speech today. His name is Tom Orez. Tom Orez. Okay, you are Gary Owens, a cop living in the future city of Zale. You have a laser pistol and a stunner. You are part of a police unit tasked with funding government criticizers. Okay. Uh, listen to his speech. You walk down to the speech and see a large crowd of people. You push to get a good spot. Tom or Ez steps on the stage and gives a rousing speech about the government. Okay. You cheer. Suddenly, the lights go out and you hear a loud noise. You duck and look around, but it seems the people didn't notice. Then a gunshot is heard, and the people begin to panic. Uh-oh. Okay. 
Wait, how do people not notice a gunshot, but I hear it enough to duck? Maybe I have super ears. Because I am in, like, fucking the future. Plot twist, you discover that you are an SCP creature created by the Illuminati. Holy fuck. Yeah, cyberpunk cop. Hmm. Let's see. All right. Scan around and look for where the shot came from. You look at the area and see no shooter. The people around you begin to panic and push forward. You fire your stunner and the what? crowd stops moving. I just fucking shoot at the crowd of random people? With a stunner? Hello? Stop resisting. Uh, okay, so they all stop going around. Question. Everyone in the crowd and ask if any of them did it. You question over a hundred people, but no one seems to know anything. You sigh and decide to go home. No one seems to have any clues about who did this. Hmm. Damn it. I just go home. As you walk back to your car, a man steps in front of it. He holds up his hands. Don't shoot, he says. I'm not armed. Who are you, and what do you want? I'm Detective Aris Jafar, Robbery and Assault Department. He says, I received a report that you used a stun gun on this crowd. Can you tell me what happened? Fuck, okay. Uh, Tom gave speech. Someone shot... Shotgun at speech. Crowd panic. I question crowd. I find nothing. I go home. Detective Arif Jafar stands in front of my car. Hey, bars. <laughs> I received a report that you used a stun guard on the screen. Can you tell me what happened? Someone shot a gun. And I didn't find out who did it. Okay, he says. It's quite odd no one saw anything. I'm going to help you find out who did this. Okay. Sounds like a deal. What is your expertise? I'm an expert in people, Jafar says. I can find out what they are thinking, what they are doing, what they did, that sort of thing. So you're a psychic? Do you have powers? Yeah, pretty useful. Jafar says. He looks around. I don't think anyone saw me come here. We should get going. Are you sure someone didn't see you? Why do you use so many words when few do the trick? Uh, cause I don't really understand how the AI works. I'm not good at this yet. I suck. I'm gonna hit enter. We don't want this getting back to ZBD.
Who is ZBD? ZBD? Zootopia Police Department, <laughs> Jafar says. We're the cops who will get accused of corruption and brutality when we start finding dead bodies. So when do we start? No, they're all furries. Fuck. Zootopia. <laughs> Am I a furry? I don't know, are you? Jafar asks. What does that have to do with anything? Because you sure ask a lot of furry related questions. What? Oh my god. Um. He is going to help me find who did the gun shot and has psychic powers. Z. Zootopia Police Department might get involved. I don't know. Fucking perfect. Um, should I say I'm a furry? Should I be one? Who knows? Anyways, let's work on this mystery. All right, says Jafar. Follow me. He gets into his car, and you get into yours. So are you a furry or not? Jafar asks Fuck. as you drive. Don't worry about it. You arrive at your destination, a small house in the suburbs. This is where we believe the shooter to be, says Jafar. Let's go. You enter the house and find. Who should we find in this house? A furry. Let's just go with that. A furry. Oh, wait, it didn't like that. We enter the house and find. Let's hit enter. Let's see what it says. Nothing. No one is here. Let's search the house, you say. You spend hours searching the house until. Aha. Uh -huh. I found a bunch of animal hair. You found a bunch of animal hair, you say. Yes, yes, yes. Jafar says, pulling out a small notebook and writing something down. A connection. Now we're getting somewhere. I also find a fursuit with the culprit's gun inside. Found, I should have said found, whatever. Wait, Jafar says, there's a what? A fursuit with a gun inside. Let's see it, he says. You carefully pull out the fursuit and show it to Jafar. You put your hand inside and feel a gun. Would you look at that? Oh, snap. Okay. Uh, we search a house and find a bunch of animal fur and a fursuit with a gun inside. What's his name again? Uh, Arif Jafar won't stop asking if I'm a furry. 
Whenever the AI messes up in the best moments, you can always reload uh, a different outcome. I, I know. Thank you, Mountain Dave, for the three dollars. I don't like doing it too often, though, because then I feel like I'm not taking the randomness seriously. I take what it gives me. So at that point, I might as well kind of like make my own story. Okay. Would you look at that? It's the gun. It seems like our culprit is a furry. I knew it. Tifa says, they're into that freaky, weird stuff. You better keep looking around. After a few more hours of searching, you find a small piece of paper. It read, if you're reading this, then that means you're stupid. But I knew that already. What? You're supposed to be the genius detective, but you weren't smart enough to find this note, let alone the people WHO wrote IT. But I did find it. I don't understand how to work story. Like, I don't know how to do do and say, but story, uh, on the bottom of the note, it says twitch.tv slash vigors. Underscore can underscore fry underscore your underscore brain. Hey, Jafar, you yell. Come look at this. What? He asks. This is the website that la. That what? I hear another gunshot and it cuts off my sentence. Jafar, I ask. His dead body falls on the ground with a gunshot wound on his head. What the? <gasps> I turn, I turn around and see a man in a fur suit standing behind Jafar's corpse with a gun. Let's see, I see uh, someone. I turn around and see a someone in a fur suit standing behind Jafar's corpse with a gun. Oh, I should, it should have been under do. Hold on, let me copy this. Let me undo. And let's put it here. All of a sudden, you're hit in the back of the head with something heavy. When you wake up, you're tied to a chair in a warehouse. Oh, fuck! Look around. The room is large, empty except for the various pieces of furniture you're tied to, a few old machines in the corner, and a table covered with plastic, on which are dozens of knives of various sizes and shapes. Uh... Okay. Jafar gets shot in the head by someone in a fursuit while we're reading a note left in the house. I'm... Wait, it won't let me write anymore. What? Less than 500 characters. A man in a fur suit did it. Wait, no. I read that. I already wrote that. 
I'm a little drunk. Jafar gets shot in the head by someone in a fursuit while we're reading a note left in the house. I get hit in the head and wake up in a strange in a room. Save. Okay. The room is large. Oh, I can delete the old stuff? Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, next time then. The room is large, empty, except for various pieces of furniture you're tied to. A few old machines in the corner and a table covered with plastic on which dozens of knives in various sizes and shapes. Just gonna hit enter. Standing by the table, wearing a fursuit that makes him almost eight feet tall, is the man who has kidnapped you. Hello, he says. Oh, God. <laughs> My God, he's huge. Who are you? Why are you doing this? I am who I am, he replies, and I do what I must. As for you, you are here so that justice may be served. What the fuck? What is justice to you? Justice is a meal, he says, served on a gold plate. Oh, God. <sighs> All right. Start trying to cut the rope with a pocket. The rope. Start trying to cut the rope that is around my hands with a pocket knife while he talks. You begin sawing at the thick ropes with the small knife, hoping to God that you don't cut yourself in the process. While I do this, the man in the fur suit takes off the head of the suit and reveals his face. While I do this, I'm going to put a Let's see what it says. which is almost as scary. He looks in his mid to late forties, with dull black hair, a strong jaw, and a nose that has been broken multiple times. Hmm. His name, or uh, he says my name, Tyler. But you can call me Train Rex. That's what everyone does. He pulls the lever on the wall, and the chair you're in slides you over to the table with knives on it. Oh god. Okay. Um so it saved everything before. Let's see what else I can write. Uh, I am trying to break free by cutting the ropes that hold my hands together with a pocket. Oh, whoops. Why did I say Rob's? Fuck, it's hard to type with my brain being slow like this. Um, the man in the fur suit unveiled himself as Tyler or 
train wrecks. All right. Um, I begin to finally cut through the rope. I begin to finally cut through the rope. Doesn't know what to say? Fuck. Second person. What is second person? Second person example. Uh... Okay, I see you. So, you begin to cut through the rope. Let's see what happens there. You begin to cut through the rope. Doesn't know what to do, fuck. All right. I begin to finally cut through the rope. Let's see if I do do. It's time to start, he says. Time is muscle. Muscle is strength. Strength is power. Power is justice. What the fuck? Huh. Cut through the rope and break free. I have no choice, you say, standing up. He grins and throws a knife at your head, barely missing. I throw my knife at his head. Let's see what it... Maybe I roll a 20. You throw the knife at his head. And he dodges it. You're quick, he says, but I know Kung Fu. Fuck. Oh, shit, okay, okay. What do I do? He knows Kung Fu. I won't win in a fucking fist fight. Alright, I'll, 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 you know what? That's funny. Because I also... No, Kung Fu. What should I say? That's funny, because I know karate. You put your fist out and make the sound of a pow noise. He looks scared for a brief second before laughing. It's good that you are quick-witted. What? <laughs> Prepare yourself. Actually, I'll just hit enter. He says, because I'm quick to anger, he throws another knife at you, barely missing your arm. Now, come at me like you mean it, he yells. I come at him with a flurry of karate-based punches and kicks. He dodges your first kick and punch and tries to stab you. He slices open your chest with a knife before flooring you with a quick punch. What? I win, he says. Bitch! Damn, I got my ass beat. Okay, uh... Uh oh. you learn karate from Master Vigors. Oh my god, shut the fuck up. Uh, so what has happened? Uh, I break free and have a fight with the with Tyler who seems to know
kung fu. But I know karate. He defeats... Well, I, uh, okay, you break free, but you know karate. You defeat him, or no, you are defeated, I should say, he slight, you have, fuck, your chest sliced open, and he, and you get floored by a quick punch. All right. What do you do? Uh... As you lay on the floor, you notice a knife under a table and desperately reach for it. You reach the knife and plunge it into his throat. Now I win, you say. He collapses to the floor and you stand up. Why? You know Kung Fu. That's right. I was only kidding when I said I know karate. You grab your knife out of his throat. You. You just killed Jafar. He says. What do you mean? I didn't. I killed Jafar? That was Jafar. I'm Gus. We were separated when the guards came. That was years ago. I... I have to go. What?! Huh? Can we get a possible SCP story? We can try. But it's really hard to go with a linear path in this game, as you can see. Notice that I'm beginning to bleed out. You grab a hold of your wound and take a deep breath. You saved me, he says. I'll make sure they don't notice that you're dead. I owe you that. What? Okay, teleport to heaven. I'm, just, I'm done with the story. I'm just going to see what happens. You fall out of the sky, a bloody mess. Ah, another one. You stare into God's eyes. Turn into Goku and attack him. Or into a Super Saiyan and attack God. Is that how you spell Saiyan? Nope. God turns into a piece of toast, which then proceeds to kick your head in. You wake up. What the? You're standing in pure darkness. All right, I'm done with that story. I don't know what the fuck just happened. All right, you want to do an SCP fucking one? Uh, I guess it's custom. All right, you are David Williams of the D class. I don't know if it's going to know any of these things. Um, you are tasked with investigating an SCP. Maybe it knows like what SCP is. Maybe it'll like actually fill in the blanks. I don't know. But investigating an SCP that the foundation has recently discovered. You are unsure of what it is capable of, but you just want to survive. Let's see what happens. I don't know why I'm here, you say. 
the Foundation sent me out on a suicide mission. Why would they do such a thing? Doctor asks. I don't think it's going to know. Because the doctor would be like, yeah, good luck. Oh wait, redacted, you're right, maybe. Because I am a criminal and I am disposable. Or you because are. Because I'm a criminal and I am disposable, you exclaim. Doctor looks at you in disbelief. You wouldn't understand. You wouldn't understand, you say. I wouldn't understand? Doctor asks angrily. I'm the one who discovered that these objects could be used to alter people's brain waves. So you know what this SCP does? So you know what this SCP does? No, I do not, says Doctor. This is the first time I have seen it in person, and my logs only describe what others have told me. Holy fuck, it actually knows, like, SCP stuff. Do you think I'll survive? Do you think I'll survive? I don't know. Reports say that you should, but then again, reports are often wrong, Doctor says. Uh, you are talking to a a doctor who has discovered that the SCP can alters, alter people's brain waves. You are unsure if you will survive if you, if you investigate. Let's go with that. All right. What is the name of this SCP? What is the name of this SCP? SCP-076, says Doctor. It is supposed to be a man, but I have also heard it referred to as a demon. What is SCP-076 again? I forget. Oh my god, it's Kane. Or Abel, whatever the fuck. When do I have to go in with it? I actually don't know much about this SCP. When do I have to go in with it? You don't, says Doctor. What am I required to do then? What am I required to do then? Nothing, just relax in your bed and wait, says Doctor. You wait for two hours until the doctors return with a large steel box. Okay. What do I need to do with this box? What do I need to do with this box? You need to carry it, Doctor says. You pick up the box, struggling a little. It's gonna hit enter. Like, I fucking... 
Okay. I can't carry this far, you say. You won't have to, says Doctor. Uh, can I open it? Can I open it? No, don't touch the inside of the box, Doctor says. The doctors begin wheeling you down a long hallway, turning several times. Wait, this is fucking crazy. This is actually a fucking SCP story. And I'm a D-boy. Holy crap. Okay. Um, let me delete everything. They bring me a box and say I must and wheel me around a bunch of hallways. Oh yeah, it says to keep it or say it changes to you. I keep forgetting it's second person. I don't, I don't, that's it to keep it and it has to do with SCP 076 it's good enough all right oh also don't touch the inside of the box fuck I forgot to put that part they begin to wheel me around the long hallway turning several times there are custom SCP stories and prompts you can access through the menu on the website click the arrow on the top left and then the three bar icon explore Okay, well, I'm doing this for now. Alright. What should I start doing while I'm fucking wheeling around? Uh, begin crying out of fear and anxiety. You begin crying out of fear and anxiety. Why are you depressed? We're saving your life, says Doctor. It doesn't feel like you're saving my life. It doesn't feel like you're saving my life, you say. We're doing the best we can, says Doctor, sounding exasperated. Intensely irritated and frustrated, okay. Vocabulary. Not good. Uh. Wipe away the tears and remember that grown men aren't supposed to cry. You wipe away the oh, tears and wipe. remember that grown men aren't supposed to cry. What happened to my clothes? You say, we had to cut them off of you, says Doctor. Am I just naked? Why? Why? We had to make sure you didn't have any hidden items or contraband, says Doctor. Also, we gave you a full cavity search. Why? So I have nothing on me. Am I a danger to the world? You ask. You're a danger to yourself, says Doctor. They wheel you into a room, which you immediately recognize as an MRI machine. This machine won't kill me, will it? What the fuck? Okay, they cut off all my clothes and gave me a full cavity search. Uh, I broke down in tears 
then remembered that grown men don't cry. Whatever, fuck second person, I don't care. Hey Chance, every day has been going well. I just got home from work and got my soda and Viggy shirt in the mail today. I'm no longer a merchlet. Nice, I am. My shit hasn't shown up yet. I think I ordered all my stuff a day after I released it though, so I gotta wait a little bit. Stop deleting previous summary. Read the instruction. Uh, yeah, but it only allows 500 characters, and that pisses me off. And fuck you. Apparently it remembers it, so fuck you again. <sighs> okay. I'm scared of MRI machines. I'm scared of MRI machines. Don't be, says doctor. If anything goes wrong, we'll reverse the polarity of the machine. I guess the game only works right when you do a lot of crack. I could do some crack. You know what? I would feel better if you gave me some crack. I would feel better if you gave me some crack doctor size and gives you a small glass pipe with crack cocaine in it. Hey Sodi, I love you so much. You are so cute. I like it's your true. hair quite. Want to kiss me on the whips? Shut the fuck up. Yes, I want to commit you on the whip. I smoke a little bit of crack and happily get into the MRI machine. Fuck, second person. I'll never remember. You smoke a little bit of crack and happily get into the MRI machine. If this doesn't work, I'm going to kill you. You say happily. I appreciate your cooperation, says doctor. What? I said that? Grisp or grasp the box tightly that they gave me and hold it close. I don't know what the fuck this box is, but it's some sort of SCP shit that I don't know. You grasp the box tightly that they gave you and hold it close. A few seconds later, you black out. You wake up strapped to a table with doctor looking down at you. What happened? You blacked out, she says. You also sweated profusely and your heart rate increased rapidly. We gave you a small electric shock and you woke up after that. Huh. Uh, I smoked some crack and entered the MRI machine and blacked out. Good enough. Uh, I woke up. But let's go with that. Okay. You sweated profusely and your heart rate increased rapidly. We gave you a small electric shock and you woke up after that. Um. Why must I carry this box? What does this fucking box do again? I don't know. We don't know what will happen if you don't. We think it might make a sound when you aren't holding it. What happens after I make the sound? Will something attack me? Nothing will attack you physically, but we are not sure about mentally. Will something enter my mind? I don't like the idea of someone else in my mind. We don't think so. 
We think something bad will happen to you, but we are not sure what. Will I die? Fuck, it's filling in the blanks for me, I don't know. Or suffer some sort of mental breakdown? We don't know. We don't know what will happen. So why don't I try it? Because the experiment might kill you, she says. Okay, I'm gonna throw the box. Throw the box at the wall. Out. Of frustration. What are you doing? She asks angrily. If you're so worried that something might go wrong, then let's find out what happens. It might kill you, she says. Then so be it. I can't take it anymore. Let's see what happens. You know I can't let you do that, she says. Okay. I throw the box and the doctor insists I don't do that and it might kill me. Good enough. All right. You can't stop. You can't make me hold on to this box forever. We don't know what will happen if you don't. I'm not a guinea pig, you say angrily. Well, we can't let you leave, she says. I'll do it if you give me more crack. No, she says firmly. You'll die. You sigh and realize that you're stuck here. Fuck. You're trapped and there's nothing you can do about it. You're a prisoner here, she says. I'm going to open the box and see what is inside. No. She says, and stops you from doing so. You try to think of a way out of this endless torture, but can't How think does she of anything. stop me? I mean, I, I'm holding onto the box. I open the box. You're too slow, and the box slips from your grasp. You watch as it slowly opens, revealing a tiny, silver object. Pick up. The silver object. You pick up one half of a heart-shaped locket. On one side is a photograph of a pretty woman with dark hair and bright blue eyes. I don't know. Fuck. Let's throw that in there. Um, put, is it a, wait, it's a locket. A locket is a necklace, right? Wear the necklace. As you place it around your neck, you feel a sudden shock course through your body. You gasp and collapse on the table. What's happening? The woman asks in alarm. It's starting. What? There's a voice which sounds like hundreds of voices murmuring. You begin to black out and your vision fades. You see tiny figures standing around you. They peer down at you curiously, whispering amongst themselves. Uh... What is happening? You watch as their lips move, but hear no sound. Then, the room fades away, and you see a desolate landscape of rock and sand. I need to find some crack. Um... Think about... 
finding some crack. You find yourself wandering through the desert, holding a tiny oil lamp. The light from the lamp shines on miles and miles of parched desert, lit by a bright yellow sun. Huh. Not even gonna... Acknowledge my crack addiction, it seems. That's pissing me off. I need food. I'm hungry in real life. Dommies? I could get some dommies. Uh... Tacos. Ooh, and I'm gonna get some Queso and chips, too. Okay. Place order, bang. Now. You find yourself wandering through the desert holding a tiny oil lamp. The light from the lamp shines on miles and miles of parched desert, lit by a bright yellow sun. Begin searching for food and water. You find a canteen lying half buried in the sand and break it open to find it full of water. You begin drinking greedily. Slow down, or you'll make yourself sick. Did I say that to myself? Let's see how they enter. Your father says, and you look up. There is a layer of dust and sand on his face, but you can tell he's smiling. You pass the canteen back to him. My dad? And he drinks slowly. What are you doing here, dad? Where are we? We're in the middle of the desert, son, he says. This is as far as we go. Why have we stopped? You ask. Are we lost? We are lost. I... I... I black out and am in the desert and I see my dad. And we drink water. Second person, thanks for reminding me. Wow. Uh. Why are we here? I blacked out. I thought. You blacked out, he says. And now we wait. For what? You ask in frustration. A sign. What? And now we wait. You watch as a tiny worm emerges from the sand and disappears back below the surface. Why is there a worm in the desert? You ask. There aren't any trees, your father says simply. Oh yeah. What is the locket that I put on? You watch as your father's face fades away, revealing a circle of desert around you. There is a tiny green sprout growing beneath you, in the middle of barren desolation. There's some green okay. here. Uh, then you wake up, back in the SCP lab. I, I don't know. Fuck. Get me back in the SCP story. I feel like it's taking me into Dune. You try to move, but you realize you're strapped into a chair. You look around and see that you're in a room painted entirely white. On a chair in front of you is a black box with a slot for tapes and a play and record button. Sitting next to it is a tape marked Side A. 
What the hell is this? Now, am I in a different SCP? You ask. The door to the room is slid open, and a man walks in. He wears black slacks and a long, black coat. Who are you and what do you want? Why am I imprisoned here? You're not imprisoned, Jacob, the man says. You're free to go any time. The man walks behind you, and suddenly the braces restraining you fall away. Go on. Leave. Okay, I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna see what happens. Um, but just give me a second. Uh, I awake in a room at an SCP lab with tapes marked A on them and a man in all black walks in and takes away the straps and says I can leave. Ah, uh, fuck it. Uh, okay. Leave. You try to stand, but your legs buckle. You manage to crawl towards the door. The man watches you, one eyebrow raised in curiosity. What happened to my legs? Do you remember the locket you were sent to find? The one I said was a Pandora's box. You nod slowly. It had a side effect. It made you immortal. Oh! So why do my legs not work? You can't die, but you can still feel pain. Your legs are completely numb and will be for the rest of your life. Well, this sucks. He laughs, then says, true. Now, <laughs> do you want to hear the story or not? You nod eagerly. <laughs> true. I thought as much, he says. Once, there was a powerful king. He was the strongest man in the world. Nothing could stand against him. Okay. <laughs> the man in black takes off his coat and drapes it over the back of a chair. I'm getting lore right now. Underneath he is wearing a black t-shirt with a red dragon printed on it. He has rippling muscles and the sleeves are too short to hide his bulging arms. What the fuck? Okay. Oh my god. Give me a second. Dude, I don't know what the fuck to write here. Uh, the man is strong as fuck and tells me a story about a king who was super powerful. Okay, whatever. Wow, you're really strong. Thanks, he says, glancing at his biceps. <laughs> 
So, as I said, there was a very powerful king. <laughs> he had everything, power, riches, a loving family. He limbers up his fingers, then does a quick drum solo. What? Why are you playing the drums? The man laughs. Because I'm a musician, Jacob. What's your name? It's Ula, he says, as if that explains everything. I'm lost, you admit. What about that powerful king and the locket? that I put on. The king was my ancestor. He ruled the desert lands, and they were rich and powerful. But he wasn't satisfied. He wanted more. You nod vigorously to let him know you're following along. Okay. He searched the world for treasure. He found some, too. He used to say, the dragon's treasure is mine. It is just piled in a heap. Useless to anyone but me. Okay. Ha ha. Ula laughs, then continues. Eventually, he found a locket. A simple locket. But it was magical. The locket that I put on question mark? <sighs> Ula shakes his head. No. It wasn't that one. It was another one. When he put it around his neck, he disappeared. He traveled through time. Um. He found a locket and put it on and traveled through time. Okay. Holy crap. That's super crazy. It is, he agrees. <laughs> he traveled to the future. And do you know what he saw? You shake your head no. He saw you. Ula points at you. Why me? I'm from the future. You'll have to play the rest of the game to find out. Ula puts his coat back on. I have to go. He pauses at the door. What? Congratulations on reaching this point. Only six people have ever reached it before. There's more to this story? You ask, bewildered. Oh yes, Ula says. Opening the door. Hmm. Do I just wait in here? Yes, Ula says, stepping out into the hall. Someone will be to see you soon. The door swings shut and locks itself. I don't like this. I wait anxiously. You wait for what seems like hours before the door swings open. A figure in a black cloak steps inside. Ah, you're still here. The voice is female and familiar. Who are you, and why do I recognize your voice? It's that doctor, bitch. We've spoken on the phone. I am you in the future. Can you prove it? You ask. The figure drops their hood, revealing long blonde hair and perfectly gorgeous features. That's me! Oh, shit. myself from the future who is gorgeous big word can't do it uh
is gorgeous, comes to talk to me in the room. Oh my god. It is me. What is going on? A lot is going on. The lab has a lot to tell you. You ready to go? Nod and go with him. Thank you, Fatty, Shrekky Poo, Woolcat, Preside, thanks. The figure pulls up its hood, and the two of you leave the room. We must be quiet. We don't want to wake them. You follow the figure down the hall. Wait a second, I'm a girl? But has realized. Oh, wait, what? Uh, why do... Why aren't... Why are my legs working all of a sudden? I thought they were broken. They were, the figure says, opening a door. The neurotoxin is temporary. Only lasts about eight hours. So what happens oh. when we wake them up? Wake who up? The figure flicks on a light switch, and you are instantly transported into a room filled with machinery. Monitors line every wall, with text scrolling rapidly across them. Hmm. Every few seconds, a new line of red text appears at the bottom, and then quickly disappears. Every monitor shows the interior of a small room. The sleeping gas only lasts eight hours, the figure explains. Okay. So we need to be quick. What are we doing? Yes, the figure says. You need to be quick. On the far wall is a large flat screen television. It is on, My fans but on. No wonder only I'm cool. static.
dishes. Sorry, I put Cokes in the fridge. I got a cookie. And then I was like, wait, I want a Coke now, but I want it to be cold, so I had to get ice and put it in a cup. And now I'm pouring. Yeah. And I peed. And I pet my dog. Now. Uh, uh, on the far wall is a f large flat screen television. It is on, but only shows static. What do I need to do here? This is it, the figure says. You need to press that button. On the wall next to the television is a small panel with a keyhole in the center Press and it. a red button next to it. <laughs> it's always the last thing you check, the figure says. You always forget to check it. I'm sorry, I just... Your voice trails off. Hello? You just forgot. The figure says, I just forgot, you admit. Your future self reaches up and presses the button. The screen flashes to life, displaying an image of a barren room. Okay. What is that room? That's the old lab, the figure says, the one we grew up in. On the screen, a hooded figure walks into view. Shit. <laughs> Who is that? Who do you think? The figure asks. The figure pulls back its hood, revealing long blonde hair and impeccably applied makeup. Is it she me again? directly at the camera. That's me again? I'm just seeing a million different versions of myself. What does this SCP do? I'm literally talking to a fucking copy of myself from the future, and now I'm looking at a video of myself that's live. That's me. I'm watching it with a cop. It, what the fuck? Yes, it's you, the figure says, but not right now. What do you mean? You ask. This is you in about 30 years. Oh, God. Ugh, fuck my head. I shouldn't have drank alcohol. Okay. Uh... Can I talk to my... Can I talk to it? I wonder if I can talk to myself 30, the 30 years future version of myself. No, you need to focus. Your future self says, I'm focusing, you say, but can I just ask, why can't I talk to her? There you go, yeah. Why can't I? I mean, is it a language thing or a danger thing? It's a danger thing, your future self says. You can't interact with your past self, because if you do... It thinks I'm a girl. I, I, I'm i just a her it now. It needs the bad things. Like what? Yeah, fuck it. It's already asking all the questions I want to ask. We'll have a conversation. Worse. Far worse, your future self says with uh, a shudder. Am... Here, let's continue. But why am I allowed to talk to you? You're me, your future self says. So nothing bad can happen. What? But I can't... That's com very contradicting. Okay, enter. Fuck it. Whatever. We're the same person? You ask. I suppose so, your future self says. Though, in a way, we're not. You're different. You're better. Why am... What? I bought two of your dumb shirts. Nice. They are so dumb I can't wait to put them on. 
I might even let him at the same time. That would be gone. Also, poor people are dumb, so take my money so I don't have to hit you. Damn. Thanks for the donation. Appreciate the $10. Thanks for buying shirts. Hope you enjoy them. Sounds to me like you won't, but whatever. Enter. I wish I knew, the future you says. I really wish I knew. So what's this about bad things happening if we interact? That's what I'm saying. Well, it's like this. Your future self says, when we get our powers, something else happens to us. Something bad. What? You ask. We die. Huh. Okay. Hanging out with my future self and I can't talk to other versions of my future self because they have powers and if I talk to them, I die. Okay. Uh, what are these these powers and when do we get them? That's what the Newmans give us. Your future self says they give us powers, superpowers. Zal said something like that. Zal? Zaloxa? Who the fuck is. Who is Zal? Zaloxa. Dr. Zaloxa Primus. Your future self says she's a doctor who works with my dad. Your dad? You ask. Yeah. Isn't that our dad? Our dad's dead. Your future self says, Dr. Kovas is our dad. Oh, yeah. Your future self says, so, anyway, Sal said, what? Enter. She said she saw us as failures. Yeah, I guess she would. She really wanted to find a way to give us powers. I'm at a point where I don't want to fucking interact with the story because I feel like it's already self-written. So, wait. If we're failures, what does that make her? I don't know. Your future self says, let's ask her. Okay. Like, I could just start Matt. Fuck it. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna start becoming a freak. Let's just... Start masturbating. Hey, Kovas, your future self says, Val says she wants to see us. Okay, Dr. Kovas says, not looking away from the computer he's sitting in front of. Keep <laughs> masturbating. Your future self says, loudly, what? She asks, come over here. Your future self says, okay. fuck off. <laughs> You're not even gonna pay mine to be fucking jacking off? Archive, Halloween, fantasy. Actually, no, I'm gonna stop playing. I'm gonna do something else until I'm ready. <laughs> 